why are you washing windows in the rain? Huh? Oh. <laughs> Nobody stopped me. Oh, sit down. Yes, Miss Allen? Mr. McLeod, did you know you had window washers working today? Yes, Miss Allen. It's the first Friday in April. Yes, but it's raining. Doesn't that make any difference? But, Miss Allen, if we don't maintain our routine, we'll be thrown off balance. If we don't maintain our common sense, we'll be thrown out on our air. And we don't want that to happen now, do we? Certainly not. I'm sure I could arrange to change it. Thank you, Mr. McLeod. I feel sure you'll see it that way. Oh. You can go now. Where? I don't know. Where would you have been if you hadn't been washing my window? Uh, well, I'd be washing some other window, I guess. I don't know. But you're not always washing windows, are you? Oh, yes, maybe. Yes, I am. But you don't wash windows at night, do you? At night, no. Not, not at night. Well? Well, I can go to bed in the daytime, can I? Sounds like an exciting life. Oh, no. No, maybe it ain't. Well, for heaven's sake, I don't know. Ask Mr. McLeod. He's in charge of the personnel. I'm not supposed to. <laughs> Mr. McLeod, yeah, well, he won't know. <laughs> Look, um, go away, will you? Yeah, all right, but I don't know where to. Well, I don't know. Figure it out outside. Oh, you mean, uh, figure, figure, oh, yeah. All right. Tell me, uh, which one did you pick? Which what? I mean, those, uh, coats. Oh, uh, the, the blue fitted one. Ah, uh, no. I like the checkered one. It'll sell much better than the blue one. Why? Well, I could tell when you had it out. It, you see, it makes ladies with thick waists look thicker. Well. Well, and uh, most ladies have thick waists. Ah, the checkered one will sell much better. You believe me? Hey, I gotta know. What? Why don't you like that shoe? Oh, it, it doesn't fit. It never did. Oh, you, you, you mean your feet ain't made? No. Yes? Miss Lorna Smith is here to see you. Oh, send her in, please. I've never told anyone that before. Oh, no, no, don't worry. No, it won't go no further. Well, goodbye. Excuse me. Well, who's the playboy? Excuse me, Smithy. Yes, Miss Tell Miss Pierce I've changed my mind. I want her to wear the uh, check coat instead of the fitted blue one. Yes, Miss Ellis. Smithy? Yes? Remind me not to have dessert for lunch, will you? I'll remind you, but it won't do any good. Here's your coat. The money card you get your wish. But I am going to get married. You see that, don't you? Yes, right there, don't you see? Well, I think You mean so. there? No, that's an accident, right there. Oh? Now we'll see what else there is. Oh, hello, Miss Smith. How are hello, you? Hello, GP. You know Gail Allen? How do you do? Mr. Clark's my publisher. Yes, I know. Are you Morris's Gail Allen? Uh-huh. Well, I'd always thought that she was older than you look. <laughs> she is. What have you decided on the title for my book? How do you like Hot Moon? It smells. You're stuck with it? I suppose so. Well, I'll be up this afternoon. I'm very glad to meet you, Sally. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, GP. <sighs> Awful man. Hot moon. I've often wondered why old maids in the frigid zone always write about love in the South Seas. It's what my housekeeper calls our subterranean longings. <laughs> but who doesn't want to go to pieces in the tropics? I don't. Thank you. Thanks. Would you like your future told? Oh, no, thank you. No. Yes. Why not? Sit down. Shall I tell you it? No, I want to hear hers. She doesn't have to listen. You never believed in these things. Been better off if I had, maybe. It's always the ones that don't that go right on their face. That's right. And what girl wants to go through life right on her face? <laughs> Shuffle these, please. Cut three times towards yourself and make a wish. When is your birthday? I don't need the year. October 7th. October the 7th. You're operating under the influence of the number eight. That's a money number. Really? Money and power. You're going to have to work hard for it, but you'll get it. Is that right? Well, I guess I do work hard. Good, you just keep at it. You make a lot of money. I fully intend to. But she's made a lot of money. Good. October. Libra. That's ruled by Venus, the goddess of love and beauty. What would happen if she just concentrated on that instead of working? Well, right now, she's under the influence of Neptune. That sounds pretty bad. And when Neptune is directing you, it's as though you were walking down one street 
And for no reason at all, you changed your mind and walked down another. And then your whole life has changed. Now we're getting somewhere. I'm perfectly satisfied with my life. That's why you need it changed. Let's see if the cards can tell us what's going to happen. There's a man. See? Right there. Is he, uh, <clears throat> could he be tall and dark? Yes. Yes. Could that be Eric? Oh, Smithy, they're always tall and dark. He has something the matter with his hand or his arm. Which arm? It's been cut by a native's rice knife. A native? I think it's a rice knife. It looks like a rice knife. That looks like a rice knife? I think it's a rice knife. An extraordinary life you must lead, seeing things like that in uh, <laughs> things like that. And here's a woman. My goodness, but she's got a lot of money and very pretty. At first, I thought it might be me. <laughs> You're going to be very angry with her. You might even... You might even hit her. Me hit someone? Uh -huh. Hope I'm around. Oh, and the seven of diamonds. <laughs> You've got a child, is that right? No, I have no child. Then you're going to have one. Oh, I'm sorry to disillusion you, but I'm not even... Well, I'm sorry, but there's the seven of diamonds, and you are. Do me in, won't you? Hello, Eric. Hello, Smithy. Hush, I'm just having a child. Must I leave? No, oh, please don't. Now, look here, young lady. I haven't a child. I am not married. I don't intend to get married, so how on earth you can I'm say... I'm not saying it. The seven of diamonds are saying it. And you can't argue with the seven of diamonds. Evidently not. Well, it's very interesting. A child, eh? I'd never have believed it. Oh, please don't. What else? Well, here's a trip. Oh, there's always a trip. Two trips. Across the water, I presume? Yes. They're always across the water. You're going to have to be careful, too. The trip will be dangerous to you and someone very near and dear to you. But you'll escape that time. And so will he. He? He escapes from she or what? He escapes. But the second trip will be fatal for both of you. Oh, Dan, just a few minutes ago, everything was all right. Do you mind if I go with you, Gail? Well, you heard what she said. You don't mind if I go just the same. Pardon me, Mr. Sinclair. Your luncheon guest is here. Thank you, Peter. See you later, Gail. Bye. So long, Smithy. Goodbye. Oh, Eric. Yeah? How do you feel? You. Splendid. Your uh, arm all right? Certainly. Why? Isn't Eric? Mm -hmm. You haven't been fooling around with rice knives or native women, have you? Native women? Oh. Don't pay too much attention to our little prophet here. She can get pretty fantastic. For instance, she told me once the girl I was in love with would propose to me, and I turned her down. She will? Well? Well, you think about it a while. See how silly it is. So don't pay too much attention. You get your wish. Well, that's about all. Well, that's about enough. Would you like your future told? Little girl, I haven't any. A future's like a bank account. You've got to start it when you're young. <laughs> Thanks just the same. Thank you. Well, they tell everyone the same thing. Maybe. But just the same if I were you. While I was under the influence of Neptune, I'd go to bed and keep my hat on.
stomach's going to be black and blue for a week. I, uh, what? I say, you can't hold the pole in the pit of your stomach that way. You get a fish on there that size and it kicks like a shotgun. <laughs> My stomach? I can see you've never fished before. No, I, I've never had the time. I've had more people lately that don't have time. You'd think time was something the world was running out of. There's all kinds of time. More than you'll ever be able to use. You must have thought I was acting pretty silly. Well, I guess boats make most people act kind of silly. I was sitting up in the lookout chair there sighting sharks when you came in. I spotted a couple, too. Thank you. She's a beauty, isn't she? Sure is. Bet she costs a lot of money. Mm, 26,000. Oh, that is a lot of money. Well, you don't know what you're talking about. This boat's built. Still a lot. Work a long time before you make that much money. Oh, what could you put it in better than a boat? Well, sensible things. Investments, bonds. Bonds? You can't fish from a bond. No, but if you think a person ought to pay $26,000 for a boat... Oh, you might get it for less, twenty-five, maybe. Still too much. Would you pay twenty-four? I would not. $24,000 for a boat. Now, don't say for a boat. That's cheap for this boat. Not cheap for any boat. Well, what do you want him to do, give it to you? After all, that's no, a bargain. No, I do you know, not. I, I wouldn't take it as a gift. Well, nobody's going to give it to you, so don't worry about it. All right. Anyway, I don't know what this conversation's all about. Well, I guess you just don't understand boats. I wasn't interested in buying the boat in the first place. I'm sorry if you're disappointed in the sale. But... Oh, I was trying to sell it to you. You were? No. Oh, you thought I worked here, huh? Well, don't you? No, I was never in the place before. I'm Bill Burnett. Uh, I'm Gay Allen. How, How do, do you? you? Well, that was kind of silly, wasn't it? It's been kind of a silly day all day. Miss Allen, uh, if I had worked here and you had bought the boat, uh, where would I have sent the bill? Morris, you. On Fifth Avenue, huh? Mm -hmm. You work there? Yes, I work there. In the uh, fur department? <laughs> no. Well, what uh, department? I, uh, I work for the boss. Oh, nice work. Very nice work. Mr. Burnett, if, um, if I had bought the boat and you had worked here and you had sent me the bill, where, I mean, uh, where could I have found you so that you could have shown me how to keep my... My stomach from getting black and blue. <laughs> I'm uh, staying at the Park Villa for a couple of weeks. I uh, I live in Valley. Where? Valley. Valley? Valley. Well, for heaven's sake. I've, um, I've seen the pictures. Nice, aren't they? Are they really that pretty, the girls? Really that pretty. Well, for heaven's sake. Have you lived there long? Ever since I got out of college, I worked for a cocoa company there. Well... There uh, aren't many white women there, are there? Not many. But a lot of Balinese girls. Oh, a lot of them. A man like you, any man, I mean, do you, uh, I mean, uh, do you marry those girls? No. Oh. Ah. Uh, uh, I suppose some of the men, uh, I mean, I suppose, uh, I mean, I... Well, you said you'd seen the pictures. Do you have a girl out there? Five. Five? At what? One does the cooking and one keeps the house clean and one uh, takes care of my clothes and one dances for me. Well, that's only four. I wonder you could tear yourself away. Oh, I'm going back. Bally, I... I never realized people really lived there. I... I guess I always saw just natives and... Uh, natives. How is your uh, arm? Is it all right, I suppose? Oh, it's much better, thanks. It's still a little stiff, but... How'd you know there was anything wrong with my arm? I didn't, is there? Yes, that's why I came up to the States, to get it fixed up right. I had a little scuffle with a native and got cut. Huh? A native? It, uh, it couldn't have been with a rice knife, now, could it? Rice knife? I don't know. It was just a knife, that's all I know. Why? Nothing. Uh, nothing, really. Well, uh, goodbye, Mr. Uh, Burnett. Goodbye. Hey, wait a minute. What's this rice knife business? Where are you going? I'm going to take some awfully good advice. I'm going to bed and keep my hat on. Oh, uh, <clears throat> I noticed you're looking her over. Interested? Uh, yes. Oh, well, no, I've decided that $26,000 is a lot of money. Well, that boat's really built, you know. Yes, that's what I was telling you. Thanks.
boss. The general manager, you mean, sir? Yes, the boss. All executive officers are on the 19th floor, sir. Oh, thanks. This is the 19th floor, sir. Oh. Going down? Going up. She likes this one, but she doesn't care for this. That was cute, though, isn't it? Uh, yes, it is. <laughs> yes? Oh, I wanted to see a girl, uh, a blonde. Yes, sir? She said she worked here. Her name's Alan. Alan? Miss Alan? Gail Allen. Do you know her? Why, well, yes. What is it you wish to see her about? Oh, nothing. I just wanted to take her to lunch or something. I see. What is your name? I don't... Burnett. Think... Bill Burnett. Oh, Burnett. I don't think I know you. Do I, Mr. Burnett? Oh, no, I guess not. I, uh, I wanted to take Miss Allen to lunch. Well, I thought I knew everyone, Miss Allen. May I ask where Miss Allen met you? On a boat. On a boat? I beg your pardon. Miss Allen has never been on a boat in her life, except the Queen Mary. I beg your pardon, but Miss Allen was on a boat yesterday, on her lunch hour, and it wasn't the Queen Mary. Oh, I see. Well, if uh, you'll just wait a few moments, I think I can have you taken to her. Thanks. Well, that's the boss, huh? Uh, yes, yes, that's the boss. Do you work for him, too? Oh, yes, indeed. We all work for him. Well, What's the trouble, Miss Stone? Oh, no trouble. This gentleman wants to see Miss Allen. Mm -hmm. uh, he's an old friend of Miss Allen's. Oh, not an old friend. I met her yesterday at luncheon on a yacht. On a it was yacht? A, it was a cabin cruiser, wasn't it? Uh, see, now, now he wants to take her somewhere different to lunch today. Mm -hmm. I guess he figures she's just tired eating her luncheon on yachts. Oh, she wasn't eating. She, she was fishing. F fishing? Mm -hmm. I was up in the uh, lookout chair sighting sharks. Sure. <laughs> and I looked down and there she was holding the pole wrong. And I, I told her she'd get her stomach black and blue if she held it that well, way. Black and blue, yeah. <laughs> sure, I understand. Well, buddy, come along with me. I'll take you right to Miss Allen. Oh, thanks. Goodbye. Yes, Miss Allen? Will you come in, please, Miss Stone? Uh, yes, Miss Allen. Yes, Miss Allen? Ask Mr. Ivor to come in and see me when he isn't busy. Yes, Miss Allen. I think the adult games would be better in his department than Miss Fern's. And uh, Why? Well, what's the matter with you? Well, I had a little upset just a few moments ago. I'm sorry. We had a maniac. A what? Nutty as a fruitcake. Wanted to see you. Oh, but we got rid of him all right. But what did he... I mean, uh, how crazy was he? Said he met you yesterday on a boat. Of course, oh, I knew right away. Where is he? Is he gone? Oh, we got rid of him all right. Oh. Of course, when he said he met you on a boat... He did. What? So you threw him out, huh? Why, yes, we thought, and oh. I... Uh... That's all right. Thank you, Miss Allen. He lives in Bali. Oh. Will you want me back tonight? Uh, uh, no, thank you. I'll, um, I'll drop in after the theater and clean up a few things. You sure have a lot of traffic in this town. You think this is anything? Well, it is if you're used to ox carts. Hey. Hey, pull over there in front of Morrissey's window, will you? Okay. I'll be darned. Hey, get away from my window, will you? What? Oh, are you taking a picture? No, pal, I'm just hiding here. Well, you don't need to get funny. I just asked you a question. All right, I'm taking a picture for the newspapers. Now, will you let me alone? You mean you're going to put a picture of that window in the newspapers? Why not? Well, it's all wrong. No kidding. And how would you know? I live in Valley. Yeah? Hmm. I'm an expert on that stuff. As a matter of fact, that whole thing was my idea. Oh, well, I didn't know that. No, you wouldn't, but it's all wrong. Chris, do you see that one on the left there, the little dark one? Yeah? Well, she isn't doing anything. You know, I wondered about that. Well, that's not authentic at all. You know, it's a good thing I haven't come by here. Say, how do I get upstairs there? I, uh, I better see somebody about this. Maybe that lady Miss Allen would know, huh? Yeah, maybe she would. The watchman's there at the door. Thanks. We don't want her to be wrong. Say, I'll have to watch myself if you're going to well, put everything I tell you in a window on Fifth Avenue. Well, for heaven's sake, what are you doing here? Do you often work this late? Yes. Well, how late is it? Almost 2 o'clock. He won't appreciate it, you know. The boss. You don't catch him hanging around here till 2 o'clock in the morning. You'll never get any place this way. Show him you got a life of your own. This is my life of my own. 
I'm the boss. You're the boss? Mm-hmm. <laughs> no wonder they thought I was crazy. Why? Are well, you telling me you work for the boss? Oh, I didn't mean to mislead you. Well, let's go and get some hot chocolate, huh? Oh, no, I can't. I've got a lot of... You know, a nice quiet get... place. I uh, could take you to my hotel, but uh, I haven't any hot chocolate. Say, how did you happen to come into my office at 2 o'clock in the morning? How did you know I'd be here? Didn't you know about moths? Moths? Moths. A male moth can fly straight to a female moth. One he's attracted to, of course, from a distance of a mile. Didn't you know that? No. Or about you and me? No. Nice place. Cool. I told you I wanted a nice, quiet place so I could probe your soul. That's why I brought you here. No probe? No soul. You know, for a working girl, you smell awfully good. When music stops like that, it's like someone pulled a chair off from under you. Isn't it? You don't approve of working girls, do you? Oh, it seems a pity to waste a girl on work. Want chocolate? Thank you. A girl like you, anyway. What do you suggest? Are you kidding? Would you mind putting this in your pocket? I'll lose it otherwise. Oh, pretty. Mind if I pretend your foot's still in it? Oh, I'm not. But it seems kind of silly. About working girls, I suppose you're the kind of man that uh, thinks a woman's place is in the home. Well, isn't it? I'm not a feminist, but the expression it's a man's world always irritates me. It's anybody's world who can lick it. I suppose you've got a lick. Well, I haven't done so badly. Oh, you mean making a lot of money. I suppose you do for a woman. For a woman. That's the attitude that gripes me. Well, it's generally conceded that men are the, the ones... The reason that... men have it over most women is that men use their heads and women use their emotions. But if I... So you've ruled out emotions? Out with emotions. Oh, how? Well, it, it's true. What are you going to do when you get married? Keep on using your head without emotions? I don't believe in marriage. Oh. Well, not for me or for any woman who has the sense to live her own life. I guess I've been out of the world too long. I, I had a quaint notion that women rather wanted to be married. Why? Well, they need the protection of a man. They... I know of more women taking care of no good husbands and loafing brothers. Protection of a man. I earn a salary that makes most men look sick, and I'm the boss. I have a charming apartment run by a competent maid. I'm the boss there, too. I have plenty of escorts whenever I want them, and I... I suppose you're the boss there, too. And I haven't a single encumbrance to worry me. And the most precious thing of all, absolute personal freedom. Now, for what reason under the sun do I need a husband? Well, I can think of two or three. You want to hear them? Um, no. I suppose, I suppose you think love might be a reason. That's a good start. I don't intend to fall in love either. You don't? No, love, love muddles you up. It, What's the matter with that? Well, it, it throws you. Have you ever been thrown? No, and that's not all. Don't be afraid to go around making statements like that. You're going to feel awful silly when you have to take them back. Give you my shoe, will you? It makes me nervous the way you hold it like that. Like what? I was just thinking of ordering some champagne to drink out of it. didn't have the hole in the toe. Well, you might at least have put it in your pocket. Let's go. We just got here. I know, but I, I'm tired. I want to go home. All right. Good evening, Mr. Sinclair. How's everything tonight? Nice. Oh, Eric. Gail. You're I'm not so glad to see you, yes. I just dropped in hoping to find you here. Oh, this is Mr. Burnett, uh, Mr. Sinclair. How do you do? Have Why? you got your car? Oh, yes. Uh, would you take me home? Of course, I'd be glad to. Well, that won't be necessary. We can get a cab. No, we're going in Eric's car. Well, of course, of course. That's way past my bedtime in Valley. Are you going to be with us long, Mr. Burnett? Oh, no, he's going back in a few weeks. Oh, that's too bad. Oh, I'll be glad to get back. Hope we'll see something of you. Thanks. You know, Eric doesn't feel about marriage as you do. Oh, he doesn't? No. He thinks a woman can marry and have a career and have both. Mm. Why not? I mean, he even believes that, that if a woman wanted to have her own apartment and, and he had his own apartment and... You see? Why not? Oh, that isn't marriage. 
You don't want a wife, you know. You you just want somebody who will cry on your shoulder and wash your back and things. That's a wife. Sounds a bit barbaric. Oh, he's used to heathens. Anyway, who said I wanted any kind of a wife? Nobody. Oh, here we are. I'll go up with you. No, I can go up alone. Oh, I'll go up with you. Good night, Harry. Good night, Gail. Good night, Mr. Burnett. Good night. Nice to have met you. Nice to have met you. Thanks for the lift. How about lunch sometime? I'd like to keep an eye on you, too. Uh, how about a highball Thursday? I'm at the Park Villa. It's a date. Good night. Good night. If you give me a key to your apartment, you wouldn't have all this trouble. I can find keys just like that. That was fairly rude of you trying to hold my hand in another man's car. Well, oh, the other man's car was your idea. I dread to think what would have happened if it had been your car. I'll tell you what you do. You go to bed and think about just that, and I'll call you in the morning. Please don't. How do you like that Balinese cocktail? Marvelous. I'm on my second. After you finish it, don't try to move too quick. You'll fly apart. Really? It tastes harmless. A lot of things from Bally fool you that way. Somebody's at the door. Shall I answer it? Yeah, will you? Sure. Take it easy. Take it easy. I'm coming. Oh. Oh, I thought this was Mr. Burnett's room. It is. Come in, won't you? Thank you. Mr. Burnett's taking a shower. Shall I tell him you're here, or would you like to tell him? I mean, I, I, I don't know how well you know. Oh, I know him very well, but you better tell him. There's a lady here to see you. Oh, give her a drink. You bet. Won't you sit down? Thank you. I'll be host. Will you have one of these? I, I don't know the name of them. Oh, that's Eric from Bali. Really? I'm from Bali, too. Uh, where is she? What? Uh, oh, who are you? No, Rannis. Oh, how do you do? I'm Eric Sinclair. Hello. You're from Bali. <laughs> I'll be done. See, what's in these things, anyway? Well, um, first you take the juice of a live coconut, mm -hmm. and then a little brandy. I said, who is she? Oh, uh, uh, Noel Van Ness. Who? Oh, he won't know me by that name. What'd you say? Just say Noel from Bali. Noel from Bali? No kidding. Hello. Hello, Noel. I'll be right out. All right. Are you just fresh from Bali? No, I've been living in Paris. My father sent me to France to school after I tried to kill myself. Well... You mean you... On account of Willie. Willie? Willie. I was so crazy about that him. That you tried to kill yourself? Yes. I was 17. It seems so funny now, but it was very serious at the time. You know how it is with a kid. Sure. Willie had just come to Bali from the States to work for my father. Did you get over it? You mean the attempted suicide? No, I mean Willie. No. No, I got married, but I didn't get over it. Tell me, what's this Willie got, anyway? I mean, what's his technique? Uh, Have you had more than one of those? Well, this is my second. How does it make you feel? Say, it does get you back the knees, doesn't it? <laughs> well, that's Willie. I see. Hello, Noel. Oh, Noel. Oh, you... Willie. <laughs> oh, Willie, you're more beautiful than ever. <laughs> hey, you're, you're a big girl now. Well, I made some progress. You noticed it? I uh, yeah. think I'll be running along. Oh, no, no. Uh, uh, have you two met? Oh, yes, we yes. met. Uh, well, uh, sit down. Thank you. Where? Uh, Willie, I'm staying here. Where? In the hotel, right across the hall. Oh. I knew you were here. I wrote home. Is your husband with you? I, I heard you were married. No, he's dead, Willie. He got killed in a polo game at Cannes. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, but he wasn't very nice. I couldn't care very much. He left me horribly rich, though. You were horribly rich before you got married. Well, now I'm with you. Isn't that nice? Yeah. You know, I uh, I haven't seen Noel for about five years, isn't it? Mm-hmm. You were a pretty little squirt when you were a kid. Well, I'm a pretty little squirt now. And you turned out all right. Mm -hmm. How long are you going to stay? In New York, as long as you do. And I'm going back to Bali when you do. And Papa can't set me off now. I can do exactly what I want to do. And well, if you want to kill yourself, you have a perfect right to, haven't you? I certainly have. You see? Did you tell Eric about that? Mm-hmm. Well, you shouldn't have. Oh, but I also told him it was because I was in love with you. So relax, darling, relax. Uh, well, uh, Noel, I, I guess you better run along now. I've got to get dressed and... Wouldn't you rather I leave? Oh, no, no, Eric. Uh, you see, Noel, uh, Eric and I had a date and we were just leaving and... Oh, well, couldn't I go too? Well, not this time. Why not? Say, that's darn inhospitable. Beautiful girl comes all the way over from France. And doesn't know a soul in town. And you don't invite her for a cocktail. Darn inhospitable. 
Well, you're nice. I'll be ready in a minute. I'll be right back. Oh, Willie. Mm, you're so beautiful. Girl, I know. There. Better have one, Weedy. He sounds interesting. Not particularly. He's lazy, he's not very good looking, he makes $50 a week, and he ruins my disposition. I'm as cross as a bear when I'm around him. Then why are you around him? Well, I said I didn't know, didn't I? Oh, I guess I'll go and look at the table. Oh, that's nice. But, uh, John, there'll only be three for dinner. Mr. Burnett phoned Miss Allen while you were dressing. He's bringing a guest. A guest? Yes, Miss Allen, a lady. Well. You yeah. know. Oh, that'll be all right, John. Thank you. Now you see what I mean. Finding bringing a guest. He should be here. He should have been here. He's never on time for anything. He has no conception of time. And, and when you call him on it, he looks at you as if he was sorry for you. Oh, there he is. <laughs> there they is. You look as if that doorbell punched you right in the stomach. What's the matter with you, anyway? I don't know, Smithy. I don't know. Thank you. Pull up your stockings, darling. Look nice. So help me the seven of diamonds. Good evening. Good evening. Well, good evening. I uh, hope you don't mind that I brought Rosie. Well, I should say not. Uh, Rosie, this is Miss Allen. Gail Allen. How do you do? How do you do? Uh, Rosie and I are going to be married, you know. Going to be married. Well, I don't blame you. Isn't she sweet? Where did she come from? I found her in a sugar bowl. In a sugar bowl. <laughs> oh, uh, this is my friend, Miss Smith, Mr. Burnett. Oh, how do you do, Miss Smith? How do you do? How do you do? Hello. I'm really your second cousin, but she won't admit it. She doesn't believe in relatives. <laughs> well, I think I'll show your fiancé my room. Want to go with me, Rosie? Do I? Oh, sure. Oh, come on. Is she yours? Yeah, it looks like it. Her father's a friend of mine. He got hurt in the war, and it's catching up with him. No, Mother? Pretty soon, no father. Oh, poor baby. He asked me to find a place for her, but gosh, I don't know what to do with a baby. She likes you. <laughs> they always do. Bad sign. Dogs, too. Dogs, too. I suppose women bark at you. Occasionally. You're Miss Smith, I believe, uh, Gail said. Miss Smith. This conspiracy against men, it uh, runs in the family, then? Mm, no. No, if my memory doesn't fail me, I used to be crazy about them. I'm still playing solitaire. Come on, Rosie. <laughs> Sorry to have been so long, but Rosie had to try all my perfume. Oh, she did, huh? Come here, let me smell you. My, you smell good. I smell like a June rose. Gail said so. <laughs> <laughs> Watch yourself. It's the same perfume I had on the other night. Oh, hello, Eric. Come oh, on yeah. in. Oh, hello, Eric. Oh, I knew you'd be here. Hello, Smitty. Hello. <laughs> Drop in any time, I was glad to have you. Thank oh, you. Eric, Mr. Burnett brought his fiancée. Fiancée? Very charming girl. Congratulations, Willie. Who are you talking about? Miss Van Ness, I met her. Oh, uh, Miss uh, Allen and Rosie, the little girl over there. Oh, I'm sorry, I naturally said. Yes, I can see how you were. Well, uh, have a drink, Eric. Thank you, I'll have some sherry. Uh, it won't keep you from dinner. Oh, not at all. I stay for dinner, I'd love you to. Oh, I never eat before I work. Do you work nights? Nice? Oh, yes. Night watchman? Well, not exactly. I... I'm sorry, Gail, if you're not curious, I am. Who was it you thought was Mr. Burnett's fiance? Oh, just a friend of mine. He met at my hotel. Oh, at your hotel. She's from Bali, uh, isn't she, Bill? Yes, Mr. Rat. She's from Bali. Why? Very. Really? Is she a dancer? <laughs> they all dance, don't they? Oh, she's a little old for a dancer. I understand the Balinese dancers are ancient at 14. Oh. Yes, they start rather young, about Rosie's age. Oh, so she's past 14. Yes, yeah, she's past 14. Oh, well past. Oh, <laughs> curious music the Balinese have. All flutes and xylophone sort of things, aren't they? And drums. Uh -huh. The music's lovely, simple but lovely, like me. <laughs> the, uh, so the scale's only five notes, ding dong, ding dong, ding. Like you. Oh, don't be so snappy. Uh, play something balanese, can you? Oh, sure. I uh, sing, too. Well, let's hear you. By all means. Please do. is isn't often we hear good singing, is it, Eric? No, it isn't. <laughs> you better listen. I usually sing with three other fellas in ballet. We call ourselves the Coco Quartet. Yeah. Spell it with a K. <laughs> nice. We sing all the American song hits for the natives. <laughs> That's the scale I was telling you about. Oh. This is a Balinese swing thing. Mm -hmm. 
Churik on your garris, keep it jar, kem bang. Churik on your garris, keep it jar, na wrong. Chalong selendero, alles aru en. Chalong selendero, alles keep be jang. Poor a medricarang, put ja ja. Poor a medricarang, saja, put ja ja. Poor a medricarang, put ja ja. Poor a medricarang, saja, put ja ja. That's very interesting. <laughs> very pretty. What does it mean? Well, I suppose you think it means I love you. <laughs> it does. Uh, Eric knows a folk song, too. You know, the one Mr. Meyer Bear wrote. Oh, yes. Are you blonde to quartet, too? No, Eric usually sings alone. Oh. Uh, well, maybe they're fussier up here than we are in Valley. Not so many to choose from. You, you come down there, we'll sing with you. All right. <laughs> come on, Eric. Shall I? Why not? You, you stood for me. All right. Okay. I think I'll run along, Gail. Well, you should it. stay. We're having fried chicken. Fried chicken? Mm. Fried chicken? She gives me squab broiled. Good night, Gail. Thanks for the drink. Good night. Thanks for the aria. Good night, sweetie. Good night, Eric. Oh, give my regards to your fiancé, will you? Oh, uh, by the way, where is Rosie? Rosie? Here I am, Mr. Governor. <laughs> Come on, I'm going to put you at the head of the table. See? Want some more cake, Rosie? Do I? Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Did you know that Bill's little bride to be here finds herself without a home for the moment? No, I thought she belonged to you, maybe. You didn't no. say. He's just taking care of her until. Well, we, uh, we thought it'd be a good idea if we got a little better acquainted before we got married. Nineteen children. You gonna have nineteen children? Yeah. <laughs> you see, you can't just dash into a thing like that. Well, no. He doesn't know what to do with her. Mm, I'll figure out something. Gail, why don't you take her? Me? Well, what's the matter with that? Are you crazy? What would I do with a child? I haven't any room in the first place, and I haven't the time. I'm busy all day. I... Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't bring Rosie up here. To... You're 
busy. You just don't want to be bothered. You don't want to clutter up your pretty apartment. Nor my life. Oh, that's right. You have your own life to live, haven't you? You're a free woman. I forgot. Right, I am free, and I intend to stay that way, so you needn't be sarcastic, Smith. It isn't necessary to... You know, some of these days, you're going to find out a very startling fact, that you're a human being. I think I'm quite capable. They don't build a fence between freedom and loneliness. You can walk right over the precipice and never know it. Then it's too late to holler for help. I said I think I'm quite capable of running my private life without any interference, especially from someone who hasn't done a particularly brilliant job of her own. Bring her over to my apartment when you're through here. I'll take her. And if I were you, I'd be through here now. I am. I'm sorry. I... Oh, that's all right. Smith is a nice woman. You wouldn't think so. Yes, I thought so. We've never quarreled before. It must have been very embarrassing for you. No, oh, no, no. You do understand about my not taking Rosie? Oh, sure. Smith, oh, you made me sound very selfish, but it isn't that. It, you do understand. Oh, sure. There was no reason for her to suggest it. It's simply that, well, my life hasn't any room in it for children, that's all. Oh, sure. It's simply that I've planned my life. I've worked ever since I was 14. Have you? Yes, you, you hate to work at anything that long and then just mess it all up. Oh, sure. Can't you say anything but, oh, sure? Sure, there's no reason to get mad. I didn't ask you to do anything. I know, but my goodness, you... What's the matter? She, she's crying. I imagine she overheard you. Don't cry, darling. Come on, Rosie, we'd better be no, going. No, wait. Rosie. What? Let's go into the bedroom and put some more perfume on, shall we? Oh, you don't need to bother? Oh, please, let me. I'm so sorry. Want to come with me, Rosie? Do I? Sure. Come on, then. But, Rosie, I, I want you to stay. You can wear one of my nighties. Wouldn't you like that? Let me see it. All right. Let's see. Very good. Now, what about this, huh? That's too big. Oh, all right. Well, maybe we got something better. Oh, now let's see what you look like in this one. Huh? Oh, you can see through that one. Well, it's cooler that way. Is that why you have it that way? <laughs> I guess so. Go on, up with you. Up. That's right. Listen, do you think I'm too fat? <laughs> too fat, certainly not. Whatever gave you that idea? Well, that other lady said I look like a bungalow of Kimberwood. What other lady, huh? No, that lady over where Mr. Burnett lives. No, huh? Well, that other lady has probably spent a lot of time in wood piles. That's probably why she said that. Oh, do you think I'll have a shape like yours maybe when I grow up? I hope I do. <laughs> With the start you've got, you're going to make me look like an old bag of potatoes. Why, you, you've got lines. Have I? Mm, like a racehorse. Oh, you mean like sea biscuit? Better. <laughs> you're nice. <laughs> do you think so, Rosie? Awfully nice, but that other lady's prettier. Oh, so she's prettier, is she? Well, being pretty isn't everything. Come on, let's go and say goodnight to Mr. Burnett, shall we? Come on. All right. Rosie's going to stay here tonight. Well, you're sure she won't be too much trouble? Oh, no, she won't be any trouble. I, I like her, and, and she likes me. Okay? Okay. Okay. <laughs> You sure you want to stay here tonight, Rosie? Yes. I don't blame you. <laughs> she has good smells. Yes, yeah, she has, but she's cockeyed, Rosie. Is she? Cockeyed. She's cool, though. Look, this is her pajamas. Look, you can see through them. Yeah, you can, can't you? I explained to her that it's cooler that way. You can see through it. <laughs> oh, well... Uh... Well, uh, I wish you'd go home. Oh, well, it's still early. I know, but we're tired. We want to go to bed. How late do you think a baby can stay up anyway? I'll guess. How late? How late, Gail? <laughs> you say good night to Mr. Burnett. Good night to Mr. Burnett. Good night, Rosie. Now you do everything Miss Allen tells you and be a good girl. All right, right I will. Now, come on, off to bed with you. I'll be with you 
right away. Good night. Do you uh, really wear things that thin? Yes, why? Well, you can see right through them. Well, what of it? It's my nightgown. Nobody sees me in it but me, do they? They better not. Well, uh, good night. Good night. Oh, uh, thanks. Uh, about Rosie, I mean. You going to sleep with me in this bed tonight? Do you want me to? Well, it's too big for this me. It's too big for this you, too. Well, never mind about that. Do you know your prayers? What's prayers? What's prayers? What? Prayers are where you ask for things, for protection and love, and, and before you go to bed. Oh, is that prayers? Of course, darling. Well, I know that one. Can you use your telephone? Telephone? May I please? Why, yes, but... Hello. May I speak to the devil, please? Rosie. Shh. Hello, devil. Listen, this is Rosie. Rosie. What's the matter? Well, what on earth are you doing? I'm calling up the devil to ask for things like you said. Now, ah, look, darling. Not the devil. The Lord. But everyone asks the Lord for things. Yes, because he's the only one who really listens. And you don't have to call him on the telephone. He's all around you. Is he in this room? Of course. He's in every little girl's room. Where? Why, he's here. In your heart. He's in my heart, too. He is? Mm -hmm. And all you have to do ever to ask him for things is to close your eyes and speak very softly, and then he'll hear you. He will? Mm -hmm. Look like this. Look. Dear Lord. And then you ask him. Oh. Like this? Dear Lord, don't let the devil hurt my mother in heaven and my father in the hospital. Oh, Rosie, I'm such a pig. Oh, tell him don't cry. And let Gail get over being a cockeyed pig. <laughs> It is if you're not used to it. Cold, and yet it's hot. This is nothing compared to what the Balinese really eat. Remember the time when we got up in the middle of the night to see them kill sea turtles for a feast? We'd had they lived for hours after they were killed. Hadn't we, Willie? Hmm. Uh, who? The turtles. Oh, yeah. And uh, did they? Flapping and snapping for hours, didn't they, Willie? I guess turtles figure they know what they've got in Bali and hate to take a chance on heaven. What is uh, this, by the way? Turtle? Sosace Lambat, they call it. Don't they, Willie? Mm, it's this way. I see. It was awfully nice of you to ask to meet me. I don't know anyone here. That is, uh, anyone but Willie. Willie. Hmm? What? Oh, I said I was so anxious to meet you. Uh, Willie has told me a lot about you. Really? He gets mad at me when I tell that. What was that? Oh, nothing. Oh. Oh, I thought he told you. What did you think he told me? Oh, about us. Oh, uh, you want something different to eat? A hamburger, a hot dog or something? Uh, no, this is delicious. Uh, just that I have the feeling that maybe it hasn't stopped yet. Oh, cooking calms him down. Maybe my imagination, but I can feel him flapping. Really, I can. The first time I ate dragonflies, he did that to me. They hopped. I could feel them hop. Willie said I was crazy, didn't you, Willie? How could they hop when they were fried? Anyway, dragonflies don't hop. They hopped. I know just how she feels when she feels flapping. <laughs> you wouldn't like Bali. Oh, I don't know. 
You're not painting a very pretty picture of Valley. I quite understand that. Understand what? Nothing. The Balinese have the right idea. Plenty to eat in a house like the neighbors, but no better. That's all you want. Well, what more could you want? That gives them peace. Peace is tough to find. I have peace? You? Yes, me. With a disposition like yours? What's wrong with my disposition? Now, Willie, that isn't very nice of you. I think Miss Allen is charming. And you've done nothing but pig on her all evening. He hasn't been picking on me anything of the sort. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Do you mind if we go? I'm terribly sorry, but I've got an awful stomach ache. I'm not used to such hot food. I'm terribly sorry. Sure. Yes, sir. I can let myself in, all right. You better not keep Miss Watson in waiting up for you or anything. I noticed you didn't try and hold my hand when she was in the car. You sure that's the right key? Certainly. I suppose the houses in Bali don't even have locks. That's right. Everybody's friends. I bet. Good night. Good night. You don't have to come in. Oh, I don't mind. I want to see Rosie. Well, Rosie's asleep. Oh, wake her up. Oh, all right. She looks like she's gotten littler. It's the bed. It's so big. What do you want with a bed that big? Fall out. I always did. I had to have sides until I was 15. What are you whispering about? Oh, now we've awakened us. It's just us, Rosie. Go back to sleep. Did you have a good time, Gil? Yes, an awfully good time, Rosie. Did you like Mr. Burnett's other lady? Uh, yes, I, I thought she was awfully nice. Now, come on, you've got to go to sleep now. Kiss me to sleep, Gail. Mm -hmm. There. I'm going to come right back to bed. Good night, Rosie. Night. Good night. I haven't found a place for her yet. Oh, well, there's no hurry. How's your stomach feel now? Hurts <laughs> like fury. Bill. I don't think it was the food or, or that drink, whatever it was. Oh, well, I wouldn't give you a stomachache. I think it's that girl. I don't like her. I gather that. She knows how to pretend. I don't. Oh, I don't think she was pretending. Look, you, you may think it's silly of me, but she's jealous of me. Whatever gave you that idea? She is. Well, she's got no right to be. I know that. You needn't. I know that. Hey, what's the matter with you, anyway? Your disposition's getting terrible. I know. You told me. Only around you, around other people, I'm all right. I'm nice. I've noticed that. You know what it might be? What? You might be in love with me. Don't be ridiculous. Well, of all the... Well, I'm not. How do you know you're not? Well, I told you. I, I don't believe in falling in love. I don't intend... How's your stomach now? What stomach? Gail. Nope, I'm not going to ask you now. I don't want you to say later that you didn't know what you were saying. Soda's good. You got some? Yes, I got some. I'm going back to Bowie next week. Uh, think about it, will you? I'm awake yet. Go to sleep, darling. What are you crying about? I'm not crying. Your face is all wet. That's the shower. No, it isn't. I tasted it. And it's all salty. I guess I'm tired. 
Because I've been working too hard. Gail. Mm-hmm. What am I crying about? Oh, darling, don't. Maybe you're tired, too. Have I been working too hard? We've both been working too hard. Maybe we need a rest. I guess we do. Rosie. What? Ever been swimming? No. Let's us go swimming, hmm? You won't get sunk, will we, Gail? Not if we go right away. <laughs> suppose you know what you're doing. We both need the trip. To do Rosie good, too. I'm nervous, isn't it? Yes, I felt like that once. I took a trip, too. I should have taken the wedding ring. <laughs> Tell Bill that I'd like to keep Rosie permanently. He'll be gone by the time we get back from Nassau. And, and, and thanks for not telling him we were going away. It would have meant a lot of arguments. And Wasn't then... I supposed to? You did tell him? Well, I thought he should know you were taking Rosie. What did he say? He, uh, he told me to tell you it would have been simpler to take soda. What do you mean by that? Well, how do you know? Well, good idea, I have a nice chair. Good idea, Bye, we'll wave at you. Bye, Bye darling. She won't be there yet, darling. Yes, but Mr. Burnett is. Where? See? He's the man down there that's laughing. See? Wave to him. This is Nassau. Oh, is this where we don't work too hard? Yes. The kids get awful sunburn in this country, don't they? That's their natural color, darling. Oh. Gail, is Mr. Burnett magic? Magic? Why, no. Why? Well, that's when we were asleep. The boat took us back home again. What on earth are you talking about? Mr. Burnett! <laughs> to be spending all my money riding around the country on airplanes, you know. Well, who said you have to? You did. I did? That's yes, when a lady runs, a gentleman has to follow. What do you mean, when a lady runs? We took a rest, Gail cried, so we had to take a trip. Oh. Well, when I get you settled, I'll show you this place. It's really something. Oh, you don't have to bother at all. Well, now, look, as long as I'm here, you might as well enjoy me. stage with it, and then where will you be? Yeah, then where will you be? You better get in on this. All right, simpleton. One, two. Mama, Mama don't want no peas, no rice, no coconut oil. Mama don't want no peas, no rice, no coconut oil. Mama don't want no peas, no rice, no coconut oil. Mama don't want no peas, no rice, no coconut oil. Hey, I better go swimming now. All right, well, take care of yourself, Mary. Watch her, will you? Yes, I will. Bye, darling. Maybe it's just a light down here, but you're a lot prettier. Uh, 
I haven't had a vacation in years. Maybe that's it. Of course that's it. This is really honeymoon stuff, isn't it? Mm. I suppose lots of honeymooners do come down here. In Valley, they have a custom that always made sense to me. Nogoro, they call it the honeymoon before marriage. Charming. Sensible. Now, look. If you have any idea this is going to develop into a... Well, a, whatever it was you called it. Nogoro. Yes, well, you're very much... Do they really do that? The natives. There's usually a very romantic elopement first with a young man supposedly kidnapping the kicking and screaming young lady. I suppose she'd be very disappointed if he believed her and dropped her. Yes, yeah, some young ladies kick and scream, and some young ladies take big boats to Nassau. I bet there's really something in the moonlight, huh? Mm -hmm. There is a moon. I'll show it to you tonight. Thanks. I've seen a moon. Not this one. I ordered this special. You wait. Is that all moon, that glow on the water? No, that's plankton. Plankton? It's a marine organism that makes the water phosphorescent. It shines like a million cat's eyes, doesn't hmm. it? You know, it's a funny thing. If you ever get shipwrecked any place in the tropics and you're hungry and the sea's like that, you know what you can do? No, what? Well, you'd have to have on a white shirt. And when the moon is high... Oh, so I have to be shipwrecked in a white shirt. Well, you have to be wearing something white. Anyway, you take it off. When the moon is high? Uh-huh. And you drag it through the water and that uh, plankton sticks to it like... Uh, like caviar? Yeah. And you just scrape off your shirt and eat it. Your shirt? Yeah. No, no, the, I mean the uh, plankton. <laughs> it was a little messy to me. Yeah, here you are in an open boat starving to death and you kid about it. Anyway, it proves a man can eat a shirt. I'd have it, too. You know, when you swim in that stuff, it gets all over you. Makes you all shimmery. Really? I think I'd like to try it. Well, come on. Oh, no. I feel too languid to go back to the hotel and change. Well? Well, I'd have to go and get my... Oh, oh I think I'd better... No, no, wait a minute. We've got some unfinished business. I asked you a question the other night. No, Bill, please. I said I asked you a question. All right, I answered it. By coming to Nassau? Yes. Maybe you've got me wrong. I'm on the level. I mean it. And I meant it when I ran away. You meant it when you kissed me the night before, too. No, I didn't. Uh, don't let's talk about it. You can't keep on ducking it. I've got to know. All right. I don't love you, if that's what you mean. You're lying. No, I'm not. If I loved you, wouldn't I say so? No, I don't think so, because you're afraid. Afraid? What on earth should I be afraid of? Well, you're afraid you'll have to give up being Miss Somebody who runs Morrissey's and become Mrs. Nobody. You're afraid that... Please, I want to go back to the hotel. You're even afraid to hear what I've got to say to you because you might find out you're a human being, but you're going to hear it. Please let me go. And if I let you go, you won't see me again. You know that. Yes. Is that what you want? Yes. You may not know you're lying, but I know. Let go of my and I know head. that someday you're going to fall off that cliff Smithy was telling you about, and you're going to die because I'm not there. You can see it. You're a liar and a cheat and a coward. But if I don't want you, there's something wrong with me. We have a name for women like you in Valley, but right now I can't think of it. <laughs> I'm only doing this because you don't want me to. <laughs> it's the only way I know to hurt you. And it's killing you, and I'm laughing. Here you are. Thank you. No butter on the sandwich? No, ma'am. Well, she's at it again. Won't take time to go out and eat. Here's your lunch, Miss Alec. Thank you. You keep these up, you'll have no more stomach left than a rabbit. That poor rabbit again never has anything. What are you training for? Work. You didn't go to Havana, did you? No, I... I thought I ought to get back. What did he do? Fly back? I guess so. I, I didn't see him again. Sure you won't have one of these? All right, I'll change the subject. I'll just remark once that you're the dumbest. Yes? Uh, the Mrs. Lanessia to see you. She has an appointment, but she says that if you... Well, I'll, I'll see her in a moment. Yes, Miss Ellen. What does she want? Who? How on earth should I know? It's that girl. The one from Bally? Uh-huh. But I better go. No, please don't. Yes, Miss Ellis? Have Miss Van Ness come in, please. Yes, Miss Ellis. You know, it's none of my business, but if I were you, I'd wipe that mayonnaise off my chin. How do you do? How do you do? You don't know Miss Smith, do you, Miss Van Ness? How do you do? The novelist? A novelist. I loved your last book. Oh, are you psychic? Psychic. How'd you know it was my last book? Oh, where did you, I mean, uh, how did you know about Miss Smith's book? Willie had it. He said I'd like it because it was all about love, and I loved it. Oh, I see. Well, uh, won't you sit down? Thank you. Or you could say, won't you sit down? Oh, thank you. <laughs> Cigarette? No, thank you. I suppose you're wondering why I've come. Willie, that's Mr. Burnett. Yes, we know. 
really wanted to send a note, but I thought it would be much better if we just talked about it openly and honestly, woman to woman. Mm -hmm. So since we are going to sail on Saturday, I thought you ought to know about it today. You mean you and Mr. Burnett are sailing? And Rosie. Rosie, we'll have to get a special passport for her. You see, uh, both of her parents are dead now. But I've been in touch with the ambassador from Holland at Washington, and he's arranging it. Oh, so you've arranged it? No, the ambassador's arranged it. He's a friend of my father. I see. Well, uh, when do you want Rosie? I'll call for her after dinner, if that's convenient. Perfect. At 8 o'clock? At 8 o'clock. Happy to meet you, Mrs. Smith. Thank you so much. Goodbye, Miss Allen. Mrs. Smith. What am I going to do, Smithy? I suppose you're going to have her ready at 8 o'clock. But she's used to me, and I'm used to her. She, she mightn't like it anywhere else. She's used to me. I, she might be unhappy. She's little. She'll get over it. I'm not little. Can't you call him up? Can't you ask him? No, it wouldn't do any good. He said some things. It wouldn't do any good. And anyway, I wouldn't make a man think I wanted him when I really wanted a child. That'd be too rotten dishonest the usual womanly thing to do. Well, I guess I'm not the usual womanly thing. Then I suppose you better have her ready at 8 o'clock. Do you want some perfume? No, thank you. Now, you'll explain to them about the tiny little light that I leave burning. When there's a little light on, everything looks all sleepy, doesn't it, Gail? Yes, darling, and you'll explain to them about... When it's all dark, everything's awfully wide awake, isn't it? Yes, and... and... <sighs> you'll remember all the things I've told you, won't you? Yes, I'll remember. Well, say them. Ma, you don't need to be scared of the devil. You tell the truth no matter what and what else. And you keep clean. You keep clean with your hands and your face and your talk. And what you think, just as clean as a new little cup and saucer. That's clean, isn't it, Gail? Yes, darling. Sing the song Mr. Burnett taught us every night when you go to sleep and then you'll remember us. Yes, darling. Say them. Mama don't want no peas, no rice. No, no coconut oil. No coconut oil. Every night now, so you'll remember us. All right, darling. Now you must go. Well, have a good trip. I'm not going anywhere. You are. What's the difference? I guess none. Well, goodbye, Rosie. Goodbye. Say it again. Keep saying it. I can hear you. Mama don't want no peas, no rice, no coconut oil. Darling, hush. Now, you, you don't want to make that other lady feel badly either. She, if she thought you didn't want to go, she'd be very upset. Now, come on, how does it go? Everything Mama, don't want no peace, no rice, no cocoa, no oil. Mama, no want no peace, no rice, no oil. Mama, don't want no peace, no rice, no coconut oil. Eric was in good voice tonight. Wasn't he? Pity he couldn't have brought you home. Oh, I expect he had something else to do. After all, it is your birthday. Yes. I wish Mother hadn't picked this time of the year to have me. October's a nice month. Yes, but it's kind of unpleasant getting a year older with everything around you dying, sort of. You're not old enough to get morbid about birthdays yet. Wait until you get my age, if you can imagine such a thing. Leave some lights on. Funny how easy it is to surprise even the smartest people. Oh. Happy birthday. Oh, Eric. Thank <laughs> you. It's lovely. I even have a little thank fast of my own. I thanked your mother and your father, and I even thanked Willie for going away. Uh, Eric, you haven't got enough candles on this I always day. say one shouldn't have people around who've known one too long. Isn't that what you always say? They should definitely be disposed of. <laughs> Cut the cake. Make a wish and blow the candles out all at once. Oh, I got them 
more bread. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. What else would that be at this time of night? I'll go see. Miss Gale. Ellen. I'll take the message. No, I gotta see her. He insisted on seeing you. Miss Gail Allen? Yes. Sign here. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Gail. Happy birthday to you. Signed, Bill and Rosie. It's paid for. Hey, wait a minute. It's paid for? Yes, but you're not. How about a piece of cake? Okay. What's the matter? Don't you like to sing? No, well, how do you like to come out at night in the rain and sing happy birthday to some dame you don't even, uh, lady you don't even know? I know how you feel. I do it every night. You in the messenger service? No, oh, in a way. What's your name? Jack. Look here, Jack. Let's do this happy birthday business over again, shall we? Now, this time, you know the dame, uh, lady. Maybe you get a little more feeling into it, okay? Okay. Okay. Let's go with the piano. piece of cheese. That's the difference between not knowing the dame, the lady, and knowing that she's the only lady in the world. See? No, but thanks for the cake anyway. Happy birthday, Miss Allen. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Night. Good night. That's kind of a nice idea, the way they do that. Yeah, it's a little more personal than just a telegram, isn't it? Nice idea, don't you think, Gail? What? Oh, yes, it's a nice idea. Imagine him remembering. Well, you know the elephant. What elephant? I don't know. I was just trying to say something. I'll be running along. It's time you two are in bed, too. It's late. See you tomorrow for lunch, Gail? Of course, and thanks for the cake. But you didn't eat any of it. Didn't I? Oh, I... Uh, oh, it doesn't uh, matter. I'll see you tomorrow. Good night, Smithy. Good night, Eric. I should have eaten some of that cake. Of course you should. He went to a lot of bother. I thought I did. Isn't that funny? What's the matter with you tonight? Ever since that Nothing's boy... What's the matter with me? I feel swell. Why shouldn't I feel swell? I've got everything just the way I wanted it, haven't I? Don't take my head off. I get scared when I think how nearly I gave it all up. All what? Oh, all this. Freedom. The right to do what I like, when I like. Nobody to... Nothing hanging on to me and weighing me down with worry and responsibility. No getting used to someone and, and then being lonely forever because something happened to them. No, I've got everything just the way I wanted it. Oh, oh, Smithy. Oh, Gail. Gail. You know. He got in my way. Mm, don't you love the way it smells, Willie? Barley? Yeah, you'd never think it was wintertime in other places, would you? You wouldn't think about other places at all, would you, Willie? No. It wouldn't make me happy. And I'm so happy. Are you happy too, Willie? Sure, why wouldn't I be? It's nicer if you're happy because we're getting married tomorrow. But I'd marry you anyway, even if you weren't happy. Oh, that wouldn't be any good. I'd marry you anyway. This Mr. Burnett's house. Thank you. But, uh, but it's right out in the water. How do I get there? You trot across bridge, uh -huh. you get house. Oh, well, um, I'll let you know about the luggage. I may stay. I wait.
how do you do? Yes. Uh, does Mr. Burnett live here? Yes. Is he in now? No. Oh, do you expect him back? Yes. Oh, may I wait for him? I, I've come a long way. Yes. Warm, isn't it? Yes. I expect you're used to it, though. Yes. Does uh, Mr. Burnett live here alone? No. Oh, uh, you mean he has native girls to take care of him and everything? Yes. Yes, he he said something like that. Well, uh, where are they? Me? Yes, I know, but the rest of them. No rest of them. Just me. Just you? You mean you do everything? Like uh, cooking and, and cleaning and, and keeping his clothes nice and, uh, and dancing? No dance. Just feed him, keep him clean. Plenty hard work. No dance. Well, for heaven's sake. You mean you're the only one here? That you've always lived here and taken care of him? Yes, always. Well, the big bragging so-and-so. Look, I, I can't tell you how glad I am I've met you. Well, for heaven's sake. Uh, you sit it down? I go get you a nice cool drink. This is the nicest thing that has happened to me in a long time. You know I married Noel's mother and father. Well, you did? Yes, thank you very much. You are welcome. But I think it is Billy you want to thank me. <laughs> you bet, I sure do. Uh, tomorrow at sundown, then. Tomorrow at sundown. I'd love a sunrise wedding. Only Willie says it sounds like an execution. <laughs> Oh, Father, you don't mind. The natives are so anxious to dance for the wedding, and it'll make them happy, and I've known them all my life. Rosie learned to dance, too. That's all right, isn't it? Of course, it is all right. You know, the Balinese have the same reverence for marriage that we have. They never marry unless they love, and once they are married, only death parts them. Marriage is such a wonder to me. The thing that happens between a man and a woman to make them want no one else on this earth but each other. It is a frightening thing, really, because it is their responsibility to keep that fragile bond intact and living. Who was it? Amiel. He said, in every union there is a mystery, a certain invisible bond which must not be disturbed. Come on, Willie. If we have to go to your house and change, then we'd better hurry up. Okay. Thank you, Father. You have the ring, my son? Yes, I have it. Coat more shin down. Goodbye, Father. Have you got company? I hope not. Don't be long, darling. You know, we have to be in town in an hour. Okay. Hello, beautiful. Hello, big braggy so-and-so. Hello, what? <laughs> pretty lady to see you. Lady, where? You go see. Very pretty. Oh, Bill. Gail. Well, this is a surprise. How have you been? Fine. Just fine. How's Rosie? She's fine. She's out playing someplace. Oh, I'd love to see her. Do you think she'll remember me? Oh, of course she'll remember you. I got your birthday message. It, it was nice of you to remember. No, you didn't answer. I didn't know what you I got. I couldn't. I, I'd been sick. Sick, huh? <laughs> Imagine me sick. I've never had anything wrong with me in my life. I went to the hospital. Well, you feeling better now? Oh, yes. Yes. Do you know what was the matter with me? It, it was very odd. It, kind of hard for me to tell you. You don't have to tell me. Oh, yes, I do have to tell you. That's why I came here to tell you. Gail, if you wouldn't say anything until I'm through it, it's difficult. Well, doctors came and they went away. They didn't know what was the matter with me. And then, and then one very wise man came and he knew. He reminded me that a long time ago it was said, it is not good for man to live alone. He said that meant women, too. Do you know that I... I kept crying for Rosie and for you when I didn't know what I was doing. 
Listen, Gail. Uh... That's how he knew. He said that however carefully a woman may have organized her life, that a husband and, and children are, well, necessary to make her complete. It's like, it's like going about with one arm or something. You see, you're, you're missing something. But you don't always know how important those things are until you let them go by. And you have to pay. I mean, any woman does. With an awful loneliness. Gail, will you listen a minute? He explained that this loneliness had been lying in wait for me for a long time. And, and that when you went away, it, it closed in, actually, on my heart. And I was sick. That's what was wrong with me, Bill. I was sick for you. That's why I've come here, Bill. May I stay? May I stay? I think it would be so awkward if you did. Oh. Hello. Hello. Willie, did you tell Miss Allen? Noel and I are going to be married tomorrow. Oh, yes. Congratulations. Of course, congratulations. You must congratulate Willie, too. Otherwise, my feelings would be hurt. Of course. Congratulations, Bill. Thanks. Do you think I might see Rosie? I wouldn't. Why not? I don't think it would be fair to Miss Allen or to Rosie. I'll get her. No, please don't. She's right. It wouldn't be fair to Rosie. Well, goodbye, Bill. I'll see you to your car. I'd sooner go by myself. Goodbye. I feel awfully sorry for that woman. She has made such a fool mess out of her life. She isn't happy like we are. You are happy, aren't you, Willie? Willie? Oh, sure. I'll go change. I'm not staying. OK, we go. No, wait. Go drive her quickly. Come on, Gail. Don't stick in the office. You've got to eat. Why? You know, when I get these on, I want to go sheing. I found a new fortune teller. I hear she's amazing. I think I'll do without fortune tellers. Anyway, uh... Anyway, what? Bill's coming up. Bill? Yes, they're in town. On their honeymoon? I suppose so. He's got a nerve. Why? Is there any reason why people can't be friends? No, no reason. Except I've never thought it was very decent. Hello, Tony. I'm going to lunch. Oh, uh, when, uh, when's Eric leaving? Soon, a year's tour. Isn't that nice? Hmm. I'll miss him. Yes. Smithy. I'm going to marry Eric. You what? I said I'm going to marry Eric. Does he know it? No. I suppose he'll have me. You suppose? Well, you know what the fortune teller said. She said he'd turn me down. Mm, I have a picture of Eric turning you down. You know, Gail, I think that's awfully nice of you. It's not nice at all. I want to. Women are funny people. They get a sock on the nose and immediately dash out and try to bandage up somebody else's nose. You've read that somewhere. Most women are just little Girl Scouts grown up. A first aid kit in one hand and a knife in the other. Gail, you know, I've always loved you, but now I like you too, very much. Say, I just ran into Smithy outside, and uh, she yelled congratulations at me. Is she that happy I'm leaving town? Well, no, I, I think she's happy because I'm going with you, if you'll let me. Of course I'll let you. I think it'll be swell. What did you say? I said, will you let me go with you? 
Would you, Gail? Yes, I would. Are you sure? Very sure. But, but your job here, I, I mean... I what? don't like it anymore, Eric. Isn't that funny? I, I simply don't like it. So you'll have to marry me or I'll starve to death. Oh, darling. Mm -hmm. I'll try and make you very happy, Eric. Happy? I'm the happiest man alive today. Don't you realize that, that I've been waiting for this, that I, I've wanted... Do you realize? I guess I didn't realize before. I'm sorry if I ever made you unhappy. I never want to make anyone unhappy. Hey, wait a minute. You haven't made me unhappy just being around you, just knowing you. And now... Oh, God. I'm going out and buy up the whole town. See you at dinner. And I'll come back all loaded down with, with rubies and palaces and, and... and Goodbye. All right, darling. Yes? Mr. Burnett is here. Oh, uh, send him in. Yes, Miss Allen. Oh, hello, Bill. Oh, hello, Eric. How are you? Oh, and your little fiancé. Well, you're certainly a devoted couple, aren't you? We didn't get married, though. You didn't? No. Would you mind taking care of Rosie for a minute? Surely. Don't I get to see Gail? I'll call you if we get to stay. I'll see you later, Eric. By the way, where are you stopping? I'm at the Park Villa again. I'll give you a ring sometime. Well, come in, Tony. Hello, Bill. Hello, Gail. Did you get my message that I was coming? Yes. I don't just like to bust in on people. No, it sometimes isn't best. Close that window. Excuse me, please. Uh, maybe I should go out? Haven't you finished yet, Tony? Huh? Since I haven't finished yet. Oh, no. I've got to do inside yet, but I can come back. No, stay. Uh, go right ahead. Uh, she said she wants you to stay. All right, all right. Well, how's everyone with you? Fine. How's everyone with you? Fine. I just saw Eric outside. He's looking well, I thought. Yes. We're going to be married, you know. Married, huh? Well, I don't blame you. He's a nice guy. Nicest I know. Congratulations. Yes, of course. Well, uh, I just dropped in. I, I was in town. And... I'm glad you did. Anytime you're around. Thanks. Gail, uh, are you happy about marrying Eric? Of course. Why? I just wanted to know. You can't just rush into a thing like that. The priest told me something in Valley. He said that in every union there's a mystery, a certain invisible bond which must not be disturbed. That's something to think about, isn't it? That's, that's very pretty, isn't it? I always say it's a mistake to go back and look at the place where you were happy when you were young. Isn't that what you always say? That's what I always say. It's always such a letdown, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, it sure is. How's Rosie? Oh, she's fine. Well, if you're ever around sometime, look me up. We can... We can have some laughs. Yes. I, I don't think I'll be getting back to Bali. I, I found it a little hot. Well, so long. So long, Bill. Uh, come on, Rosie. Don't I get to see Gail? No. Why not? Well, because we got bounced. Is there something I could do? Oh, she wants me to buy her some perfume like yours. She's kind of batty about perfume. She was sort of raised on it. There's some in my locker. I'll give it to her. Oh, that's very nice of you. She's been so good. She's been so good. Excuse me. Yes? Uh, Miss Allen, I'm going out for a few moments. Certainly. Which one? What? Which one did you pick? Which man? Oh, the first one, Tony. I like the second one. Look, Tony, you may know a lot about women's clothes, but you're a bad judge of men. Uh, you know, the, the first gentleman, he maybe is a fine gentleman, but he's no good gentleman for you. He is a fine gentleman. Yeah. Your kind of a woman needs a guy, not a fine gentleman. Well... The second one is a guy. He certainly is a guy, for heaven's sake. The first gentleman, he will let you be the boss. Exactly. And the woman ain't supposed to be the boss. Well, not the boss, Tony, but you see, the first gentleman, he understands that, well, for instance, he understands that I'd like to keep my own apartment. And, what? And he'd have his own apartment. And, <laughs> and 
What's the matter with you? Oh, nothing. I was just wondering what the second one, what he said to that. Look, it's none of your business what the second one he said to that. I mean, what's... I knew it. He's a guy. You know, your kind of a boss woman needs a, uh, you know, boss man. He will make you give to life, and for that, he would give you life. No, I like the second one much better. I don't know why I'm talking to you. You don't know anything about it anyway. What don't I know? Well, you don't know that he's married. Who's married? He's married? <laughs> don't let you kid him. He's not married. Well, well, how do you know? I just take my word for it. He's not married. Have I been looking in the windows 20 years for nothing? Oh, what's well, so long, Eric, and congratulations. Thanks, Bill. Same to you. Why? Uh, and Noel, uh, Mrs. Burnett. Oh, oh, we didn't get married. No? No. Well, well. Why did we get bounced? Uh, Rosie, you say goodbye to Mrs. Sinclair. Bye to Mr. Sinclair. Bye, honey. So long, Eric. So long, Bill. Bye to Mr. Sinclair. Yes? Gail, I bought that palace. You did, Eric? And I found out a funny thing about myself. What? I didn't want to share it. What do you mean? I mean, you got to find yourself another fellow. Eric! And I saw a very likely looking one leave here a few minutes ago. A large fellow with a small girl. If you hurry, I think you'll catch him. Farewell to the Farewell to the Thou charming one who dwells among the bowers. <laughs> Wouldn't be an actor if I didn't want to show off for the swell exit, would I? Thanks for the use of the hall. Oh. What are you waiting for? Yes, Miss Allen? Miss Stone, telephone the store detective in the main entrance. Tell him to stop him before he goes out. Hurry. But who, Miss Allen? Mr. Burnett. He mustn't get away. Arrest him if necessary. Anything. Uh, kidnapping, shoplifting. Say he stole my baby. Yeah, that was us. Hey, that kid's got my bear. Let me down. Let oh, I don't think that's true, Rosie. It's probably one just like it. Let me down. Let me Take down. it easy. This is a pinch. A pinch? What for? Kidnapping. Miss Allen said you stole her baby. What do you mean I stole the baby? I took the baby up to her in the first place. The father's Take a friend of mine. He said you weren't married. He said he said that he'd been looking in your window for 20 years. Are you? Why? Married. No. Oh, Bill. Look, Miss Allen. Did this guy steal your, the, the baby, or didn't he? Yes, no. he did, but it doesn't matter. Where is she? Oh, for heaven's sake. Rosie! Hello! Mama don't want no peas, no rice, no coconut oil. Mama don't want no peas, no rice, no coconut oil. Mama don't want no peas, no rice, no coconut oil. That's the end, Rosie. That's the end.